Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. This spring and fall we're hosting a whole brand new series of workshops for teachers for math, science, English, and history. You should check out these workshops. We're going to be holding them in Massachusetts, in Florida, in New York, in California. Check them out. I'm sure you'll find them very helpful. Take care. Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're doing a new problem as part of the Go Math 2015 Teacher Workshop Series. It's number 33 on the CBES Elementary Math Practice Test. This problem is going to involve algebra word problems. We're going to start by jumping into it. I want you to notice the structure of the question. You can look, use this structure and sort of analyze it so that you can answer other types of algebra uh, word problem uh, problems that they're going to give you on your teacher certification exams. Notice they're going to give you a scenario in a box. They ask a question. Um, this is a question on a question. And then they give you some options. First thing I'm going to do is read over the scenario and I want you to visualize what's going on in this uh, scenario so we can pull out the math and solve it together. Alright, so first uh, let's read over what uh, this says here. Maria left her home at 9 a.m., ran three miles to the lake, ran around the lake twice, then ran home along the same route for a total distance of 10 miles. What was Maria's average jogging speed? And then we have a question here. Which single piece of additional information is required to solve this problem? And we have some options. A, the distance around the lake. B, the time she returned home. C, the amount of time she stopped to rest. D, the average length of her jogging stride, or E, the amount of time it took her to run from the lake to her home. Now read this again. Read the scenario again. Pause me at any time. Pause this. Read it over to yourself. Visualize. When I say visualize, I want you to sort of pull out the math. So to help me with that, I'm going to draw a little picture here. Now, what's and in this picture, I'm going to put the important information. For example, um, again, uh, just like in the last one, Marie's going on a, a trip. So uh, I guess it's important to know that on this trip, you know, she, she runs over hills and around lakes a couple times and then she returns home. But then on this trip, you know, she's starting at 9 a.m. And I think in total we're told that, you know, after going jogging around this whole thing, the total distance on this whole thing is 10 miles. Right? That's important. Now, if we, what are we trying to find out? What's the average jogging speed? Well, that would be, if we're trying to find average, wouldn't that be whatever the distance is divided by time? Because if, if she, let's say she ran 10 miles, which we know, and she did it in two hours, we could say her average speed was, what, five miles per hour? So, so in order to, in order to f solve this problem, to get to that average speed, you know, we need to know how long it took her. Now, I, I, I threw in two, two hours, but when you read this over again, you realize that it doesn't tell her a return time. It doesn't say that she got back home at 11 a.m. And if it did, then we could do these calculations out and we could divide total distance by the total time and get the average speed. So what we're missing here isn't the distance around the lake. That's not really important. Uh, and it's not the length, um, the average length of her jogging stride. Not that important for this problem. It's not about the amount of time she stopped to rest. And it has nothing to do with the amount of times it took her to run from the lake to her home. It's all about the time she returned home. Now, you can call this a drawing, or you could call this a whole bunch of scribbles. But what I'm doing is I'm just, in my own way, and, and your way is going to be different than mine, but in my own way I organize some of the information that's in the scenario. I thought about what it is. It's, a, it's some sort of, and I wrote a, a, a model drawing of, of her trip. And I put on my, my piece of paper the information that I knew, that she starts at 9 a.m., that she goes 10 miles. Now this other piece of information was missing, I plugged in an example so I could work out, you know, the average miles per hour. And in this process of working out the problem and doing this quick sketch, I kind of arrive at the answer with confidence, knowing that that's the missing piece of information that I would need in order to get the average miles per hour. Okay, 
All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Have a great day. Take care.